Hi, I'm Maria and this is the Agile State of Mind. Welcome! Today we will talk Kanban. Kanban is about optimizing the flow and today we will learn the basic rules and regulations or practices and principles that will help us move the work through its workflow. We will also learn how to visualize the work and why it's so important, how to spot bottlenecks and reduce waste, what's the little low, where to find information about Kanban and its principles, and last but not least, I will show you a Kanban 101, my own Kanban starter kit. Let's go with the flow! Kanban can be difficult to grasp because there's no one scrum guide to Kanban, not one guide to learn it all. And even though we have the essential Kanban condensed, released in 2016 by David J. Anderson, it still is more vague than the scrum guide. It is less prescriptive. There are no roles. And he based it on Toyota's Lean Manufacturing when it's called Just In Time. So when you start with Kanban, you don't know you should learn about Toyota, about Lean, about Kanban itself. It can be overwhelming. And I hope that with today's video, you'll get a little relief in your quest to understand how to do Kanban. I remember reading somewhere that Kanban is like chess. Rules are easy to learn, but difficult to master. Let's start from the beginning. The word Kanban has its meaning both in Chinese and Japanese. And it means a signal, a card or a visual board. And there is also the Kanban method that was described by David J. Anderson as a way to manage the workflow. There is though a lot of confusion about Kanban. And I explain it more in my Scrum vs Kanban video here. Typically, people will confuse a Kanban board with the Kanban method. And today we will get rid of all that misconception. I like Kanban for its simplicity. Start with what you do now. Easy, isn't it? It means that when you go to a new team, you don't just redefine the whole process, but you come, you observe, and you take notes. You try to understand the way they operate currently before introducing any change. This shows respect towards other people and the processes they established. As a first step, you might want to visualize the workflow the team is following right now. I don't know if you noticed, but in what I just said, I managed to include one Kanban value, that is respect, one practice, that is to visualize, and one principle, Start with what you do now. And it all blended nicely, didn't it? Kanban is very logical because it simply makes sense and quickly it becomes natural and embedded in the team's DNA. There is no revolution involved with Kanban method. It's more about a peaceful evolution. Change needs time. So we seek improvement through evolutionary change and looking for leaders at all levels. There is also a great distinction between managing people and managing work. With Kanban philosophy, we want to manage the work and let people self-organize around it. We want the teams to focus and understand the customers and their needs. Because Kanban comes from the word that is very visual, it's like a card, a signal, a visual board, we put a lot of emphasis on visualizing anything in Kanban. So all practices and policies need to be visible for everybody at all times. So how do we do this? Let's see an example of how do we start working with Kanban. For that, I created a few cards because, as you know, one of the most important representations of Kanban can be a Kanban board. But having just a Kanban board doesn't mean that you are doing Kanban method. Those are two different things. 
you can have a Kanban board in Scrum or in any other framework because it's just very useful. So it's like putting one of the Kanban practices in other methods. So imagine that you come to a new team, a new work, and you want to help the people with their struggles, with the processes they use, with the way they work, and make it more efficient, more predictable, and more stable. That's the essence of what we do with the Kanban method. So the goal is never to implement Kanban or the goal is never to implement Scrum. The goal is to make it more agile, help the people, the teams to make their processes more efficient. So start with what you do now. So you go and you observe and you start mapping what they do already. You probably go somewhere where they have some backlog they don't, may not even call it that, but they have a backlog and they have stuff to do. Then this very simple process would be to have something to do, start doing it and then have it done. So this is a very simple way to visualize the work. It can be any work. It can be work of a call center, any department. It doesn't have to be only the knowledge work, development work. But when we start working with the teams, we want to check more detail, we want to spot bottlenecks and we want to see where is our waste. So the queue, the waiting times that we can help eliminate. Then we would start with what are, what is hiding beneath the in progress. And in different teams, it might be different. I will give you an example. So to help with visualizing the whole process, we can map every step. Let's say that this team starts with developing. So something is in active state, developing, and then they have a development done, which means they stop footage that it's been developed and now it's going into review. Once it's been reviewed, we put it in ready for QA. The review is about the pull request. And after ready for QA, it goes into testing. And then let's say that it's done. This is one of the Kanban practices, visualizing. So we already know what is our workflow. Maybe we didn't realize it was so complex. The next step would be to start using this workflow, putting your work there. So basically visualizing what's already been in progress. So then we start seeing that, oh, look, we have three here, just one here, two here, and there's nothing being developed. So this is when we spot bottlenecks. Can it be that the ready for QA is a bottleneck in any team? Has it ever happened to you? So this is the typical bottleneck. And, and, and then you start working on some policies for the team. That's also in Kanban, the policies for the team to improve the flow of work and eliminate the, those waiting times when you accumulate a lot of stuff and nothing is actually in the active states. So we have the passive when you wait and the active when you do. I like Kanban because it has great quotes. So one of the great quotes is stop starting and start finishing. Because what we usually do is instead of looking what we can finish, we start a new thing. So what's our instinct now? What should we do? If we have stuff to be done, the easier thing is to take another thing and start developing, right? Yeah, why, why bother with what's here? I, I will start a new thing, brand new development. And that's why we need to look at the whole system in Kanban, not only in my column, and see how we can improve the overall system. So this is called also systems thinking. You don't only look at one part, you look at the whole system. And in our system, we have a problem here and a small problem here and no problem here. One of the most famous things for Kanban and one of the most difficult ones is to implement work in progress limits. So we basically define how many tasks we can have in each of the column. And we do it collaboratively with the whole team. So we see that Having three already is a problem. So maybe we should have, let's not be too aggressive. 
So let's start with maybe two. So we put those policies, just as I said, that everything is visual and everything is explicitly shown in Kanban. And we say, this is the limit, the work in progress with limit. And we can start small. We can start that we put only two here and maybe one here, because that's where we have the biggest problems in our, um, in our open. We can even start only with one at the beginning. So this is also something to remember. We do evolutionary change. We don't directly change everything. So if we see that in our, we have this problem, we put two limit, which means we cannot put anything else. This has to come back here until we move something from ready to QA and test it actually. So instead of me going now and starting a new development, my default action should be to go and say, okay, I will test this. So I liberate one more slot here and I get this done and then I can start new development. This, that's why Kanban is great to foster collaboration within the team. We need to look at the whole system at all time, irrelevant of the role that we have in the team. Kanban doesn't prescribe any roles. So basically anybody can do anything. What a wonderful world, isn't it? And this is the Kanban starter kit for anybody who wants to start doing Kanban. We visualize the workflow, we spot the bottlenecks, we implement work in progress limit, and we do it evolutionary. So once we implemented this one, then we go and we should start implementing other ones. As you see, we start from the, the end. We start from what's closer to being done to help this task move through the workflow and have it done. As soon as we get done, we gain money. We have deliverable to put on production. One more thing that is interesting is the little law. The more items that we have in the queue, the slower our system becomes. Imagine in a shop, if you have a lot of people in the shop, it means that it will take much longer in the queue and you will spend much more time in the shop as opposed to when there's few people in the shop and you just go buy what you need. That's the same thing here. The more tasks we have in progress, the slower our system becomes and the longer our lead time is. So another practice that is very useful is to measure stuff. So we can start measuring at the beginning without any work in progress limit for how long it takes for one item to move through all these different steps. And then we measure it. And then once we implement those changes, we measure again and see, does that improve? Is our system faster? The typical two measures that I would like to mention today would be to measure the cycle time or the lead time and the throughput, which means cycle time or lead time. Cycle time is the time that we can define. Maybe I want to just measure how long it takes from development to ready for QA. And lead time means from the beginning till the end. So how long it takes for one thing to get through all the steps and throughput is the number of things done for an amount of time. If we use Kanban with Scrum and we have a sprint of two weeks, which is also possible, then we measure how many items we do in the end of this sprint. And then we can check with different measures if our system is becoming better or not. We, as you see, at all times, we are looking at the work. We never looked at the people and we never said, you now do this. That's also very important. That's what we said. One of the common principles is to manage the work and let people self-organize around it. So once you give to the people a good system that's clear and all the policies are clear, they can self-organize to make it work. And one last thing to, important to take into account is the pool system. So as I said that people self-organize, they also start seeing that if we have this work in progress limits, we stop having possibility to push more work to the system because we already know the more work we have in the system, the slower it goes. So pool system means that when we see that 
look, here I don't have anything, so I can still pull this work because I have a slot available. But for example, here I cannot move it farther. So this way we learn that instead of having somebody to push, like, yeah, go, go, start, do more, more, we say, no, sorry, but our system is full. We first need to liberate something to be able to add something. There's also this rate with which we finish stuff should be the same as the rate with which we start. That's also an important measure in Kanban. You should have uh, everything in balance. And this is the Kanban starter kit, my Kanban condensed training for today. I hope it will give you a bit of more clarity, better overview of what we do in Kanban. I never mentioned any of the meeting. There is the daily Kanban meeting, which is like the daily scrum. And uh, you can watch my video about walking the board and that will help you understand how you can approach having a daily in your Kanban world and also in your scrum world. And there are also some other practices, but I think for the most important part to understand how to optimize the flow, this part will be enough. Please let me know in the comments if you would like any further videos on Kanban and what especially you would like to understand. And I will try to make them. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.